for Tim and myself and for teachers across this country. I don't know any teacher that doesn't dream about starting their own school. And so for us to have this opportunity with, with the district to be able to make that dream come true and really have control over what we teach our students when and how, it truly is a dream, dream come true. I really feel like I have the, the ability to be creative and really teach my kids in a way that I feel works best for them. We as instructors and teachers and educators really do know what's best for our students. The most important thing about our school is it doesn't look triangular with every, all the decisions may, being top down. It's more a round circular structure where everyone has a voice. So the lunch baby okay. is having to bring so it to the oh, And then you should yeah. have like your paperwork yeah, but too. Been so since we do not have a principal, we had to go and get a waiver from state statute in order to allow teachers to evaluate each other. And it's really about holding each other accountable for what's happening in our classrooms. As we write our teacher goals, we actually uh, have our goals approved by our peers. Um, and, and those people that really know teachers know that we're often harder on each other than, than our principal would be because we're in each other's classrooms and really engaged in the work on a daily basis. district just kept saying don't worry you know we'll, we'll find a place and you know since we've been really looking at, at trends across the country we knew a lot about um, is in Milwaukee and in Minnesota all of the, the uh, facility sharing and different programs they had there as well Chicago and New York so it wasn't a foreign idea to us but definitely a foreign idea to Denver um, and, and the community resistance is, is what we were most fearful of but I do think it helps that we're in elementary and then Richel's a middle and Kip is a high school so it's not direct competition I have had no parent complaints and I know parents were very concerned about high school students in the building and elementary school students in the building and I have not heard from one parent who has voiced, um, who continues to voice that concern. There's just a folder in the, in the Richel office where you sign up if you want any of those shared spaces, if you want the auditorium, if you need the gym, if you need the fields for anything in particular, just go in and mark off your dates and time. Really have not, on our end, um, our little ones and the big kids cross, rarely, rarely, rarely cross paths. Like, and having met Craig and Lori even before the summer got going, I just felt like there was a good energy in the building and that the adults were all here for the same reason and we care about our kids, we care about all kids, so that we'd always be willing. It, it just, I did not feel as though it would ever be an issue and it hasn't been. It doesn't really matter who's in there or what uniform you're wearing or if you're this big or if you're this big. It's, they've been. The kids are amazing. They, they've adapted. I can count on one hand the times where there have been um, language sorts of things with the big kids, but not, not anything. You, if, you went to, if you took your kids to the mall, you'd hear a hundred times more than what they hear here. <laughs> all felt like we wanted that stuff at the beginning of the year. I know there were uh, some frustrated people, including the superintendent, when he came into the building being really clear about where to go for which school. At the beginning of school, it was pretty overwhelming, the numbers of people, if you just think about delivery drivers and, and mail and uh, parents, and even students, you know, so it's brothers, sisters, all kinds of people. And they all know Rischel, so they came to Rischel. And so we were getting inundated with where do I go and I don't know and I'm lost in the building or
in future shared campuses, now that we have this visual guide, uh, we'll roll that work into the beginning of the project. Probably the biggest challenge for us is we have really, really little bodies in a building that was made for bigger bodies. A lot of our kindergartners are smaller than your, what I would consider average kindergartners. So, you know, they're drinking water, it's going down the front of them, you wind up the puddle on the, you know. We did put in a kindergarten bathroom. That, not that nothing was done. There our kids are like, we have a couple of kids this tall, right? So they can't, they have to get a taller kid to push them. I've had lots of conversations about toilets for little boys. Having the, the shared campus has, has been fine. You know, we've we've scheduled potlucks once a month with with the other staffs. Um, we've also uh, reached out to the the KIPP teachers, um, where we're actually going to have some of the high school kids work with our elementary kids in, in PE. That's something the kindergarten teachers have chosen to do. We have some of the racial teachers that are pairing up and doing some uh, mentoring and buddy reading with the elementary. And um, you know, we'll be doing some common you know celebrations and those kinds of things with all three staffs and so it really hasn't hindered it you know I mean we have some uh, you know minor details that we've had to work out with the district like um, Rachel and Kip's bells ringing in our part of the room which are just technical um, interruptions that are you know pretty annoying but you know we've we've worked to get them fixed and so we've just all kind of had to have some some patience but we're really excited about the opportunity to work with the middle school and high school kids and have you know developed great friendships with the, the our other colleagues at both schools we eat lunch together we go out to lunch together so it's, it really has been nice